Hello, I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to this amazing mini lecture on one, race in baseball, and two, Latinos in professional baseball in the late 18th and 19th century. Uh, this is not about contemporary baseball. Uh, this lecture is really about race through the lens of baseball, and very important, how race can change if you need it to change. Now you must understand race to understand this lecture. And it is crucial that you've read the previous lecture and reading on race. But as a quick review, there is only one race, the human race. Race is socially constructed. It's fake, it's not real. It's like my sister's eyebrows. It's fake and misleading and, and it doesn't even match. Humans created the racial categories you know today mostly to serve their own agendas. Race is socially constructed. The common white, black, American Indian, or Alaska Native, Asian, and Pacific Islanders races are all socially constructed. Race is a social construct. But if that's true, which it is, then race is fluid. It's fickle. And race can change, right? If it's fake, which it is, then we can fake the funk, right? By the way, what race are the two mouses and the rooster? And how did you know that they were Mexican? How do you make a mouse and a rooster Mexican? Jeez, that's racist. Be sure these things are racist, but they hint at today's lecture. How race is socially constructed and therefore can change. And with that, let's talk about Latino baseball through the lens of race. Now let me ask you, who is this man? Who is this black man? And I hope you know who he is. You better know who he is. You should know who he is. He was a great American. But he's famous for... This is Jackie Robinson, famously known as the, quote, first person to break the color line, end quote, in professional baseball in 1947. And that phrasing is extremely important here. Jackie Robinson as the first person of color to break the color line it's a phrase still used today nearly 75 years later many books harbor the same phrase and you can see those on the screen first to break the color line jackie robertson is the freaking man be sure about that he is a hero but is jackie the first person of color to break the color line and what does it have to do with chicano and latino history in fact, Latinos are the first, quote, colored people in Major League Baseball. In fact, 13 of the 16 Major League teams had at least one Latino on their team before Jackie Robertson broke the color line in 1947. That's 81% of the teams already had a Latino. How come you weren't taught this? Why don't you know about this? Well, that's what this lecture is for. This historical narrative makes perfect sense if you look at it through the lens of race. Jackie Robinson is still awesome, even though he went to UCLA. But this is a story about racism, baseball, and the fluidity of race. And this is important, where Latinos fit into this racial dilemma. Much of this lecture is based on Adrian Burgos Jr. amazing work playing America's game, baseball, Latinos in the color line, and there he is sitting, smiling center stage. Over 50 Latino players from Spanish-speaking Americas appeared in Major League Baseball before Jackie Robinson in 1947. How is this, po uh, how is this possible if the color line wasn't broken until 1947? Here's the answer. Since the 1800s, nearly 80 years in total time, Racist teams wanted to win, but they could not use people of color. Specifically, they couldn't use black people or people dark enough to arouse suspicion. They were banned. What did they do? They lied, they cheated, and they changed people's races, according to Adrian Burgos Jr. White owners, managers, and journalists manipulated the social construction of race to find racial ambiguity and plausible deniability. They, i.e., they try to fool people 
that players were an acceptable race. I.e. they try to construct, socially construct someone's race. It was Latinos who were the main group to test racial tolerance and racial ambiguity. How? Latinos were racialized. They weren't from Latino to white or middle ground in between black and white. A player's race was changed into something more acceptable. White owners, reporters, and even the players themselves were involved in changing their race and hiding their true race, um, ethnicity, and identity. The first Latino to ever play in Major League Baseball was 18-year-old Cuban Esteban Bayan. Esteban played with the Haymakers in 1869-71. to and his parents were part of an anti-Spanish program which fit in nice with racism, expansionism, and U.S. baseball. In 1871, the Haymakers joined the National Association, which became the National League in 1876. The Haymakers later became the New York Giants, now the San Francisco Giants. Insert your own joke here. And there he is standing on on the far right, on the last row. And I hate to ask, but it's important. Does he look Latino? Well, that's partly how managers were able to trick people into believing some players were white and not Latino or they were an acceptable race. Race is crucial, but skin color is paramount. And that's hard to fake. Uh, Vincent Nava was the first Mexican-American baseball player in Major League Baseball. He did it in 1882, a little before Jackie Robinson. His nickname was Sandy, which is a safer name. He played for the Providence Club in Rhode Island. He was a catcher. But, and this is very important, he wasn't labeled as Mexican. He was racialized as Spanish. As part of the rules, they changed his name, racialized him Spanish, and used his father's name, Erin. A name that doesn't sound like a Mexican, a Mexican American born in San Francisco, of Califas. Racialized Spanish. His moniker was the Spanish catcher of the Providence Club. How racist! He was also referred to as the Little Spaniard, Don Irwin, and Señor Irwin as part of their network of lies. And here's a team photo. Can you spot little Sandy? Phenotypes help the rules. And there he is again. And I ask, hate to ask the question, but it should help you understand. Does Chente look Mexican? Go ahead, look. Mira, look. Again, it's all part of the rules. Another example of the fluidity of race and how Latinos broke the color line well before Jackie Robinson is Frank Arianas. He played for the Boston Red Sox, arguably one of the most racist teams in the early early and mid 20th century. Another Mexican professional baseball player, he too was racialized as Spanish. He was acquired from the West Coast Pacific Coast League. Sporting Life called him a descendant of the Spaniards who settled in Southern California. It's not true. And by the way, Alley was settled in 1781 by a mixed race group of people thousands of years after natives already founded LA. And can Frankie pass as white based on his looks in 1908? If so, that's important. It's also racist. Another example of a person of color racialized is Louis Sacalexis. A Penobscot Native American. How do you change the race of a native? You really can't. So you lively up the story. Yes, he's Native American, but he's labeled as the noble savage. His advertising becomes something of a freak show. Come and visit this Indian. He won't hurt you. He's strange and exotic. He is, in fact, the noble savage. Come to the ballpark. Here is the 1908 New Britain team in, Co- in the Connecticut League. Four Cubans played on this team. 
And the last Latino I'm going to talk to you about who had their race change is Ted Williams. One of the greatest baseball players that ever lived. Ted Williams was a Mexican-American. And in conjunction with his handlers, did not go public about his race. Even before he joined the Red Sox in 1941. His story is interesting and complicated. And I recommend you watch the documentary, The Greatest Hitter Who Ever Lived. This Mexican-American who is not Chicano purposely hid his Mexican side, including his, his mom, which is where he gets his Mexicanness from. He's, a, he's from San Diego, by the way. Uh, Williams was a Hall of Famer with a 406 batting average and one of the greatest. For those, those of you that don't know, if you're hitting 406, you're doing pretty good. He led the American League in batting six times had 2,654 hits. He was league MVP in 1946 and 49. Was player of the decade of the 1950s, even after missing years serving as a pilot in World War II and Korea. And when you think of Ted Williams, I think of some of the greatest baseball players that ever played the game. Joe DiMaggio, Yogi Berra, Babe Ruth. Uh, he's that type of caliber player. And be clear, there are many more examples of Latinos who broke the color line as their races were altered into something safe. But we need to end this lecture. But as we end this lecture, we end with this. People of color, and in this case Latinos, played in the whites-only Major Leagues Baseball. And Latinos also played in the Black or Negro Leagues. They play in both leagues. In 1935, Martin Diego became the first Latino from the Negro Leagues in the Hall of Fame. They also hints of what Roberto Clemente called themselves as a double minority, black and Latino. Again, Latinos could play in the white leagues once their race was changed or adopted, and in the black leagues. And it shows you just how difficult it is to try to put your finger on race and where Latinos fall into American society. And here are the New York Cubans and the Black or Afro Leagues. Again, Latinos can play in all these leagues. Latinos are really the rainbow and part of the pioneers as well. I want to thank you for watching very much. Have a great day. Please do all the readings. I hope you learned a lot. Stay safe. Thanks again.